Hey everyone, my name is Sam, and thanks for checking out this video. Make sure to hit the subscribe button down below, hit the bell notification, and give the video a thumbs up. Apologize in advance, not really, but I'm tired, so I'm sitting down for this one. Hi! Okay. Okay. And Sherlock's joining in this time. Hmm? Hello. So regular watchers will know that every month I like to do a wrap up, tell you exactly what I read, what were my favorite, least favorite, most surprising books, and then any sarcastic lessons slash confusingly serious lessons that I learned from a or a series of these books. So this month I read City of Ghosts by Victoria Schwab, Hocus Pocus and the All New Sequel by A.W. Jantha, Talon by Julie Kagawa, I attempted to read but actually ended up DNFing Scream All Night by Derek Millman. How to Hang a Witch by Adriana Mather. Girl at the Grave by Terry Bailey Black. Small Spaces by Catherine Arden. Toil and Trouble, 15 stories, 15 tales. Well, my arc is actually 16. But the official publication was 15 Tales of Women in, Rich in Witchcraft, edited by Jessica Spotswood and Tessa Sharp. Escaping from Houdini by Carrie Maniscalco, the third book in the Stocking Jack the Ripper series. Legendary by Stephanie Garber, the second book in the Caraval series, or trilogy. Yeah, trilogy. Dust and Shadow by Lindsay Fay. Crooked Kingdom by Leigh Bardugo, or Lee Bardugo. Probably Lee. I say Leigh, but Lee. Queen of Shadows by Sarah J. Mass, the fourth, yeah, fourth book in the Throne of Glass series. These Vicious Masks by Kelly Zakos and Tarun Shanker. I think I said those names right finally. And finally, Empire of Storms by Sarah J. Mass, the fifth book in the Throne of Glass series. Actually, this month was quite a little bit slower of a reading month for me, just in total numbers. I did read some books that were like a little bit larger, like 300 plus pages, as well as I did quite a few rereads or books that are not rereads, but I knew I was going to really like them and they were really anticipated for me. So I took my time and like spread it out over several days rather than just like marathoning it in a day because I either didn't have the time to marathon it in a day or really just wanted to take my time and enjoy the book. So spotlight time, my favorite, absolutely favorite, and it was probably because there were several books that I read this month were really good, but this was a debut. I had nothing to base this off of, and it wasn't even really on my radar. I ended up picking it up because it was a group, a book, a book, a group read for the TBR and Beyond group, and that book is The Girl at the Grave by Terry Bailey Black. I am a sucker for historical fictions, a sucker for feminism in historical fictions especially, as well as some mysteries with that feminism in some historical fiction. So this book was kind of perfect for me. It's not insanely fast paced which is how I like the majority of my historical fictions but I didn't find it excessively dry and the ending was a quite surprise for me but I loved it and it made sense it was a little bit idealistic but it was kind of also like relevant and appropriate for the time period I was pleasantly surprised for this debut work so much that I originally got the book through the library and then I ended up returning it to the library after I read it and got my own physical copy which is somewhere on my bookshelves but I'm sitting down and I'm not getting up now. So it's somewhere probably up at the top because B is at the top. And I would really highly recommend it if you enjoy historical fictions. It's a really, really, really fun read. Well, not fun because there's like actually quite a bit of murder. But like it is fun and a really good mystery historical fiction and just really good YA debut as, as a whole. Unfortunately, I also was pretty easily able to pick the worst book. Now, worst, once again, is probably not the most appropriate word, but it was my least favorite book of the books that I read, and that is definitely Dust and Shadow by Lindsay Fay. I'm actually kind of surprised that this was not the book I was going to think would be a letdown for me, because I absolutely adore, adore Jane Steele. That's literally the only other book that I've read by this author, but I literally read Jane Steele and was like, cool, I'm in love with this author and went and bought every single title that Book Outlet had on their site by this author to try and catch up all the back catalog. And this was the first of them that I tried picking up. And I think it was probably realistically not the best one to try and start off with. My thing is, it's an account of the Ripper killings by John Watson, so it's kind of a hist it's got a bit of that historical fiction element and the mystery, but it's also got that Sherlock Holmes retelling aspect of it, and that's really where it did lack. For me, the historical fiction and the murder mystery is fine. I, I enjoy that sort of stuff. It wasn't super in-depth. It's a standalone, but it's it was enjoyable, and it focused a bit more on the actual murders rather than something like, I think, Stalking Jack the Ripper, which was murders, but it was also Audrey Rose and Thomas and her father and her uncle and, like, all that stuff, whereas 
I think this book really just missed the mark on being a Sherlock Holmes retelling. And if you don't know, I have two dogs named Sherlock and Watson. I've watched like every adaptation. I think I don't, I, no, sorry, I haven't finished the last season of the BBC Sherlock. But like I'm literally in the middle of this year of reading the Sherlock Holmes stories again. And it just failed to deliver on like an, a, any of the adaptation version, versions of Sherlock Holmes, like the television series by BBC, the Robert Downey Jr. movies, the Fox, um, what's it called, Elementary. Like it just didn't fit any there. It doesn't really fit well with the books either. I just didn't understand. Yeah, so, you know, long ranting, ramble thing nonetheless. Unfortunately, this just didn't work for me. So I have to... You know, sad face put that in this category here. And definitely the most surprising book was Hocus Pocus and the All-New Sequel by A.W. Jantha. I was going in that book ready to rip it to shreds. Hocus Pocus is like a religious text to me, the film. So I was like, if you go and like novelize it, you need to do it properly. And I don't think anyone's really ever done a novelization of a film into a book ever like fully justice. But I was pleasantly surprised by this. I actually enjoyed the sequel. I didn't think the book was amazing overall. It really did lack. And it, it was it, it was clear that it was a movie to book adaptation and not vice versa. But I didn't want to throw the book at the wall. I didn't want to like burn the book. I wanted to still watch the watch the movie. And then I still wanted to read the book on its own. And I still have it on my Christmas wish list. So I was pleasantly surprised by this. And I think it'll be a good one for me to like just revisit every Halloween-y time period. And of course, my kind of favorite part of this video is I want to tell you about some things I learned this month. Whether we want to call them lessons or like words of wisdom or... I don't know but these are some things I thought about about these books during this month. Firstly you can't just slap Sherlock Holmes and Watson onto something and get a freebie like five stars. Even for me you gotta deliver. City of Ghosts has just confirmed to me what I have thought of really since beginning reading Outlander that there are just too many ghosts in Scotland for it to be habitable for humans anymore. Hocus Pocus, as I've kind of said before, just let me know that not all adaptations are going to suck. So I need to like cool my jets sometimes on my anger when I hear something's going to be adapted and like give it a chance because it may not like always be as good, but it could be a decent adaptation. And sometimes it's just nice to see a story that you love in a different format that you can enjoy in a different way. Talon taught me that even dragons have star-crossed love romance and drama in high school. Girl at the Grave and Escaping from Houdini just taught me that I am like an immense like trash person when it comes to historical fiction mysteries. Like predominantly YA but like legitimately historical fiction mysteries at all. As long as the woman's not like a, I don't know, I can't even think of like a stereotype. Just like those timid people who just like let people bully them or whatever. I don't want none of that. I want females in my historical fiction mysteries and I want them to be strong and independent women. But man, when they're there, I'm so trash. It's like trash for mass, but just a genre instead. Legendary just reminded me that Stephanie Garber is a messed up human being who I know just thoroughly enjoys messing with my mind and my emotions. My reread of Crooked Kingdom both reminded me that I need and want, but also don't need and don't want a third book to the Crooked Kingdom duology, which is apparently supposed to eventually come. But like, this book was both satisfying and unsatisfying as a conclusion. And if you've read this, then you understand what I'm saying. But like, I don't know. These vicious masks just kind of reaffirmed to me that I could literally not travel into any time period with a TARDIS or whatever magical tool that gets me there into any time period. I'm just, I'm so loud. The only way I would survive in like Victorian era would be if I had superpowers. And I know I would 100% be evil. Like not Voldemort level evil, but like evil. Like I can't put up with like the sexism and stuff. Like no. So I'm pretty sure it'd be kind of evil. Or maybe like kind of evil, but good like that random like Deadpool character in the film that's not really on anyone's side and just doing their own thing but causing havoc to everyone else involved in that problem yeah that'd be me Queen of Shadows and Empire of Storms made me realize how shafted I feel that we didn't get a Selena and Rowan total just romantic trash novella the way we did in Akatar, which is basically all that A Court of Frost and Starlight is, that plus like people grieving. But like, why didn't we get a Selena and Rowan one? Or a Lysandra and Adian, I think that's his name. Or like a Lorcan and I don't know whatever that girl's name is that he hooks up with. Or like, I don't know, just or Dorian and oh, see, I don't want to say that. Dorian and Maeve or whatever her name is because I have a feeling she dies sometime. I don't, there's no way that they're all making it. I don't know. I just feel like 
feel like that is needed and was not given. I said this in my review, but just making sure that everyone knows that small spaces just reminded me that I need to tell everyone and remind them that scarecrows aren't like a solution to like people that are terrified of clowns. Me. Scarecrows are just vegetarian clowns. And finally, escaping from Houdini made me confront the fact that if I was on the Titanic and someone was like actually murdering people in the middle of like magic show events on the ship, I would 100% still keep going to those magic shows. I'd be like in purge mode, but I would still go. I was reading the book where those things were happening and like all of a sudden people turned around and the person beside them was like stabbed 20 times somehow in the last 20 seconds. I'm that person who was like, well, I'll see y'all tomorrow at dinner. I'm curious to see what else is going to happen. I don't know why. I think it's kind of messed up that I would do that. But uh, still, 100% would keep going. So those are all the books that I read this month, my kind of general thoughts on them, and any interesting facts that I learned about myself or the books. Make sure to check the description box down below. I will link all of the books to their Goodreads pages, and I will also link all of my social media. If you follow me, I will follow you back.